here's your host, Norman Vaughan. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to the show that we were going to call Those You Have Missed, but we decided to use the boss's title and keep our jobs instead. Yes, it's a slightly different format, this series. There's me for a start, and six guests direct from the Egyptian room at the British Museum. <laughs> now, I love my mummy. <laughs> all the money is going to charity, but more about that later. Let's first of all meet our guests, all appearing under duress and the threat of letters to the Inland Revenue. First of all, the effervescent, and I don't remember when he ever wasn't, William Franklin. <laughs> From Brighton, but no rock star, Dora Bryan. <laughs> Still buzzing around like a bee, Arthur Askey. <laughs> and the team on my left, you travel here on a pensioner's pass, the young Clive Dunn. And here's a lady whose assets are always up front, Barbara Windsor. <laughs> and the man whose black tights are for Hamlet or Hamming, Max Wall. <laughs> what can you say? So, let's get straight into the game. As I said, all paid for charity and, of course, a little bit of fun. Now, the marks are there in front of me. That's the scoreboard. There's one point for each correct answer, and they can only be right or wrong. There's no doubtfuls or half points. So off we go. Now, the first clip is for Dora Bryan's team. And this is where we join two well-known landlords who, with the help of a well-meaning friend, are trying to install a piano in their upstairs tenant's flat. <laughs> Swing it forward a bit, Jerry. I think it's high enough. Forward? Uh... Forward. Which one's forward? Well, don't you know? Of course I do. One of these two. Meeny, meeny, mock. Well, it's either going to go forwards or backwards, isn't it? What else can it do? <laughs> You won't have to bother getting your breaks fixed now. <laughs> now, that was a clip, of course, from Man About the House. Tell me, this is the Dora's team, what were the character names of the landlord and landlady? George and Mildred. Absolutely correct. That's yes. one point for Dora's team. <laughs> now, tell me, what was the name of the character played by Richard O'Sullivan? Just his Christian name only. George and Mildred. Uh, oh, come on, Arthur. Oh, you know. he, oh, God. <laughs> <laughs> oh, dear. Any fool no um, <laughs> yeah. That was it. You know. Fred! Fred! No, no, no. No. <laughs> Nobody knows? No. Oh, come on, Bill, you Jim? Know. No, no, no. Sorry, I have to pass that one. Next question. What was it? Oh. For our own satisfaction. Uh, for your satisfaction, his name was Robin. Oh, Robin! Oh, yes, yeah, yeah, of course. He's got a series yeah. now, Robin's he next. He had a red oh, yeah. Yeah. Now, who shared the flat at George and Mildred's house with Robin? I don't need the names. Who shared the flat? Uh, the two girls. Two girls. Right, two correct. Girls. Correct. That's absolutely correct. Do you correct. want their names? No, don't need their names. What are their names? Elsie and Dolly. I like the, I like the phone number. It was the now, talk of Ditchley. <laughs> what, was the, what was the name of the man operating the crane? Roy Kinnear. Roy Kinnear, absolutely. Yeah. Right, that's three points for Very your team. Good. Very good. I now, feel sorry for you lot over there. I know. <laughs> now it's a clip for Barbara's team. And it's party time, or at least it's supposed to be, as we join two young gentlemen taking their mother out for a birthday dinner. The trouble is, some of the money's been borrowed from the savings box and not returned. Having gone up since last year. <laughs> what? I know. Do you think we'll have enough? Well, if she has wine. Yeah. Is there something the matter, boys? Oh, no, nothing, Mum. We're just choosing. Well, I'm having what I had last year. Um, the spaghetti bolognese, yes. What is that? There. Crikey! Yeah, I know, it's double. We're gonna make it. Hang on. <laughs> Not if you have spaghetti. Why shouldn't I have spaghetti? <laughs> I tell you what, if we ask for two spaghettis on one sauce. How much is the bread? <laughs> oh. <laughs> yes. If you hadn't have dug into the MBB box. It was only a loan. Yeah, but you forgot to pay it back. Boys! 
Oh, yes. Sorry, Mum. We're still choosing. Yeah, well, I've chosen again. Something else? Yes, I'm going to have the grilled prawns. <laughs> Essa, you pretend to feel sick and go home. <laughs> OK, Barbara, tell me, what was the name of that series? And Mother Makes Three. Absolutely yes. correct. Now... Yep. <laughs> The second question is, who was Mother? She's a friend. She's a friend. Oh, uh, uh, Wendy. Wendy? Yeah, Wendy Craig. Wendy Craig, absolutely correct. Mm. Now, question number three is a bit more complicated. Before this series, Wendy Craig played a dizzy mum in a BBC series. What was that called? And her mother uh, makes no. five. <laughs> <laughs> no, <Tosie. laughs> yeah. no. <laughs> well, I got to laugh. <laughs> well, that wasn't BBC. Oh, I wouldn't know. Oh. What was it called? Anybody know? No, no. It's called Not in Front of the Children. Oh, okay, cool. so I can't give it that. Can't give it that. Oh, okay. I used to know. That. Can't give it that. <laughs> <laughs> I used to know. Now, this is question number four. Question number four is what did the ITV recital change to when Wendy Craig acquired a husband and stepdaughter? That's it. The ones you said. And her mother came to. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to give him that. I'm going to give him that. Oh, oh, he wants to get along. I'm giving him that. I'm giving him that. <laughs> so that we're even now. We've both got three. Three for Dora, three for Barbara. Okay. Now, this is a photograph round. You're going to see some photographs, and this time you can use your buzzer. And the first photograph is Boris Karloff. Now, there you see Boris Karloff. What I want to know is he played the part of Colonel March of Scotland Yard in this 1955 series. What was the name of the department that he worked for? Who's that? The really Department of Queer Complaints. Absolutely correct. That's one point for Doris. Queer Complaints. Now, this detective, this detective has a dirty raincoat, a beaten up car, he smokes a cigar. What's his name? Hello? 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 Who pressed the buzzer? Uh, I did. You did. I, I got the light, you see. Barbara's got the light. You see. So what? Well, well, shall we share it then? Yeah. I, I, Thank Peter you, Falk. Okay, you can have a you can have Money. a mark each. Can we have you can have a mark each. I'll give you a mark each. This is Jean Morton. This is, is Jean Morton yeah. actually. And she's got, and she, she's got two cuddly bears. bears. Yes. What were they called? Uh, what were the name of those cuddly bears? Um, Dinky and Dirty. No, no, no. No, I've no idea. You don't know? Tinker and Tanker. Absolutely right. Tinker and Tucker. Well, I'll give you them. Well, I'll, yeah. I'll give you them. Oh, I'll give you them. Oh, we call it my second name. <laughs> There's another photograph coming up now. Uh, yes. John Hurt played the part of Quentin Crisp. What was the name of the drama documentary? Naked Civil Servant. Naked Civil Servant, absolutely correct. <laughs> now the scores stand now at Dora's team have got six, Barbara's team have got five. Oh. Up to now. Now here's a photograph coming up. She plays the part of a commissioner's wife. What was the name? <laughs> Whose wife? You know. Macmillan and Sam. Oh, yes. No, Macmillan and Wife. Macmillan and Wife, correct. But what was the name of the film star? Go on, you would know. Frank you know? Sinatra's daughter. No. You don't need it. No. Oh. The correct answer is Macmillan. That's the correct answer. You've got well, a point for that, okay? Yeah. So that's brought the scores. We've got the scores are now absolutely even. Six for Dora's team, six for Barbara's team. Yeah. Now, keep your fingers on your buzzers, teams. Keep your fingers on your buzzers, because it's still a free-for-all. This time, we show you another clip. This is part of the first episode of a London weekend television serial about two men and a girl on the run in occupied France. Now, a resistance telegraphist called Robespierre decides to lead the Germans away from them by breaking the radio silence. Why did you do it? Why? Far, far better thing again. Only for real. One man left to go. What's the form? Um, you drive. Nina on the back floor. Hell for leather and I cope.
So now th this is a buzz around. What was the title of that series created by Rex Perkin? Okay, Bart Dora. Manhunt. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Now, and that this, was a motor car. This is still a buzzer. That. This is still a buzzer. Now name one of the three runaways. Barbara. Sid Heyman. Absolutely correct. That's another point for Barbara. Right? Now, this is very important. Question number three. One of the three had memorized all the local resistance names and had to be got back to England at all costs. Who was it? Nina. Nina. Absolutely correct. That's another point. That's eight. We've got eight. We've got eight. Now, the wife of the dead telegraphist in that clip was played by a lady we've already seen earlier in today's show, usually looking much more glamorous. Who was she? Ufa Joyce. Ufa Joyce. Joyce. Absolutely correct. So you've got, that's another point to go all team. So it stands at the moment. Barbara's team have got eight and Dora's team have got eight. Very nice. And remember that both teams are playing for charity money. We've got to leave you now for about two minutes, and we hope that William Franklin will pour out some of that you-know-what. Bye-bye for now. See you soon. Thank you. Production of TV, 78, 14, straight one. Take one. Recording date, 7th of April, 78. Welcome back to those wonderful TV times and a reminder that we left you with Dora's team with eight points and Barbara's team with eight points. We're going to have another go now, which puts one team, they're both equal now, they're both equal, yes. Now we're going to have more questions to answer and we're going to show more clips of film. Now this clip of film coming up now is actually for Dora's team again, right? Dora's team, it's out with the hairnets, on with the clogs, as we trot down a very famous street and call in on some locals, beginning with a lady with something to celebrate. Clue, Coronation Street. What do you want for your dinners? Oh. She has been talking about her first thing in England for the last three months. Well, what is it? Come on. Chips. I better get my chip pan on. I'm no, so... chips are around the corner. You mean chip, chip, chip shop chips? Yeah. Oh, well, where's my... Oh, I've got it on hand. Oh, look, I'll go for chips. No, huh? you won't. We stopped every two minutes down the road by people wanted to shake hands. I'll go. They'll have your mums in the robes before you know where they are. Shall be long, love. <laughs> hey, I thought it was woman's work that was never done. <laughs> that, my lad, is an adage of the past. Yes, and the fellow that thought that one up didn't realise that one day we'd all have to take hand up flicking the duster. What are you looking so pleased about? Oh, do I look pleased? Huh. The understatement of the day. You look like the cat that swallowed the canary. Oh, it's us with the honest faces, you know. We can't hide a thing. Oh, what is it that's booked you up, then? Well, I'll let you into a little secret, you see. I've just been on the telephone and I've dropped dead lucky. Mind you, I won't say I haven't been angling for it for a bit, because I have. Oh, what have you done? I've landed a stall on the market. Oh, what are you going to sell? Everything. In fact, I'll go as far as to say, Mr. Walker, if ever you need such a thing as a live elephant, I'll get you one at 48 hours' notice. Right now, this is the Doris team. This is the first question. What was the special occasion that inspired Elsie and her friends to send out for fish and chips? Arthur. If my memory serves me right, and serves me right if it does, it was Elsie's daughter had come back from Canada. Absolutely correct. Is that right? That's oh, absolutely correct. Oh, incredible. <laughs> Actually, you got four actually, of the fish. actually, Arthur, you didn't need your buzzer that time. Never mind, doesn't matter. Yeah. You well, I thought I'd give it a No, name, no, all right. What was the name of the young man talking to Jack Walker in the Rovers? Kenneth Coat. Absolutely correct. That's another one. Oh, what part did he play? What part did he play? What was the character name? I don't know about that. Doesn't Maybe. matter. No, 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 it was no, Jack. No, I'm no Dora, does know, but she's keeping I don't. Yourself. I honestly don't. I can't remember the name of the character. Tell yeah. me something. Uh, the question number Sunny three Jim. is... No, who did Jed live with in Coronation Street? Ah, oh, Barbara, Barbara Castle. Minnie Caldwell. Minnie Caldwell, correct. That's another one. Barbara Arthur, Castle. Another one. <laughs> and when I say... And when I say he lived with her, I mean, you mean in the nicest in way. In the nicest way. He lodged with her. He lodged with her. He lodged with It's people now, like you get it, you see, get it talked about. <laughs> Question number four. What was Minnie's pet name for Jed? Oh, that was Sonny Jim. That yes. was Sonny Jim, correct. Yeah. That yeah. was Sonny Jim. So we, now, we now have a situation where Dora's team have got 12 points, Barbara's got 8. But we've got another clip coming up for Barbara. 
Now, this is we meet going to meet now a popular comedian who made a series of six mythical confessions to Thames Television from his even more mythical past. We discover him now on a blind date, and when you see him, you'll understand why. Where can we place you? I think this will contain you. Won't you sit down? That's right. Do esconce yourself by all means. There we are. Now, um, now tell me, what can I can I get you anything? A bowl of cornflakes, perhaps? <laughs> mug of cocoa? <laughs> No, I won't take anything at the moment, thank you. Oh, yes. Well, the night is young, isn't it? <laughs> what do you think of the political situation? Um, yes! <laughs> yes! <laughs> do you want sex now or later? Oh, I thought it was too. What was the title of that series? Howard's Confession. Absolutely correct. Right. That's a point, yes. Yeah. Okay. Now, the next question is... Thank you. <laughs> oh, thank you. The next question is, who was the lady on the blind date? Joan Sims. Joan Sims, correct. Yes. Isn't it? <laughs> now, question number three is, what Roman town did Frankie Howard once live it up in? Oh, uh, uh, Pompey. Pompey. Correct, correct. Absolutely. Sorry, Dad. Another one. Of course, Miss Pompey. <laughs> Now, <laughs> Frankie Howard, this is question number four. Now, yeah. Frankie Howard used to have a lady musician on stage with him who was always chilly. Yeah. What musical instrument did she play? Piano. Piano. Piano, yeah, piano. piano correct. Okay. Yeah, Very good. <laughs> now, we've got a situation now. Both teams have got 12 points. Now, here we're coming up to two news items from Pathy News. Now, now you can use your buzzers on this one. Both of them are out of this world. And the years are, the years are 62 and 1969. They're the year, so watch closely. One year is 62 and one is 69. You can use your bus. Yes, and the post office engineers were on the threshold of completing an historic experiment. The first picture received was a poor one, but faults at the Cornwall end were quickly righted, and then the face of Frederick R. Capel was clearly seen. He is chairman of the American Telephone Company. Captain Booth and his team were happy men. Now, this is a buzz around when you hear the question, give me a buzz. Now, this is the first question. In the first part of that newsreel, a rocket was launched. What did it contain? Telstar. Telstar, absolutely correct. Very good. <laughs> Round of applause for that. That's William Franklin. Now, question number two is, where was the rocket launched from? Remember, it was 1962. Uh, Press your buzzer. I'm sorry. Yeah, uh, Cape Kennedy. Uh, yeah. I was going to say that. Were you? You're yeah, rotten, man. You sure? Well, well no, this is bad. It's wrong. It's wrong because it was Cape Kennedy. Cape Kennedy. Shall I give them that? You, you know what, Paul? Because I'll you said nine, you said I'll 62. Okay. Yeah, and yeah, I well, said yes. 72. It was Cape, Cape, Cape Canaveral in 62. I believe you know. It was changed to Cape Kennedy later. I know because I got it written here. Right. I'm very knowledgeable. Question number three is where were Telstar's pictures received in Britain before being passed onto ITV or BBC Studios? Where were they received in Britain? Sanger. Yes? Well, Cornwall suggests yes, Gunhilly Down. <laughs> Absolutely, Gunhilly Down. Very good, oh, William. Yeah. Very good. Oh. 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 No, that's very good. Oh, I'll tell you, I didn't yes. think anybody would get that. That's we very good. We have a lot right. of intellectual on our team. No, really. <laughs> Sorry about that. Yeah. Ah, you got some great comedians. Now, <laughs> question number four. In the second part of that film, which was actually shot, by one of the men inside the capsule, what great event was taking place? <laughs> Arthur? The first walk on the moon. Absolutely correct, Mark. Yay! That's very good. <laughs> now we've got, we've got a situation now. Dora's team got 15 points and Barbara's team got 12. Oh. Okay? Oh. And now we come to our final program extract. Don't forget these are our final questions and you can have your fingers on your buzzers. You're going to see another clip of a film now. And I'll tell you what this clip is. We're going to roll off to the Wild and Woolly West and someone's cooking up a bit of a conflict between the trail boss and an, ori an oriental gent called Ha Chong. Oh, bless you.
Oh, no, 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 no,